We're gonna look here. We're gonna look here. Look in the lens. We're gonna look here. Right in the lens. This is gonna be a comedy show, and they're gonna want more afterwards. They'll be like, where's Cameron every time? Can we start? Be my guest. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a very special guest with us. This is Cameron, my boyfriend, for those of you who don't know. So Cameron has been on my channel a couple of times before in a couple of vlogs that I did last year and people seem to like him. I'm a very likeable man. More importantly, I like him. Who knows why? So here we are. <laughs> Would you like to tell them what we're going to be doing today? No, you can. Okay, today we're going to be talking about Cameron's favourite books. We thought it'd be really nice to sit down and do a sit down video together and talk about his favourite ever books to give them an idea of your reading taste. Oh. Yes, let's um, do that. So they can get to know you a little bit. I guess we should start by saying that you are actually a big reader. A lot of people's partners on booktube aren't. You are yes. a big reader. I read more than most people. Yes. I do not read as much as you, but I read more than most, for sure. Yeah, yeah we are both fair. big readers. And he actually works in Waterstones. I do, yep. Books. So. I'm a jam. <laughs> it's going to be a long video. <laughs> Gam. In terms of our reading tastes, do we have quite similar reading tastes? Uh, yeah, definitely now. We didn't used to as much. I uh, used to read a lot more fantasy and sci-fi type mm -hmm. stuff in the past, what, two, three years? There's been a bit of a pivot towards highbrow, pretentious literary fiction. Yeah. Because I'm a <laughs> pretentious motherfucker. Yeah, we do We do read a lot of the same books. Basically. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I still and read more fantasy than you do. I read more non-fiction than you do. Mm. Um, yeah. But yeah, generally, I think by most people's standards, we have the same reading taste. I'm doing so well. So we're going to be talking about Cameron's top five favourite books. We have some notes. fantasy. Oh, I, we have some notes too. We have some fantasy, we have some literary fiction. That's it. And, oh, one way. And I have read all five of Cameron's favourite books. Yep. Very good girlfriend. I've read all of your favourite books now as well. Have you? Yeah. Name a favourite book of yours that I haven't read. Like a favourite favourite. Howard's End. Fuck. <laughs> well played, Little Women. Or Mockingbird. It's nowhere near in the same category. Your favourite favourites I've read all of. Like the top, top. The pinnacle. Yes. Exactly. Very good boyfriend. Congratulate yourself. Doesn't congratulate me. The first book of Cameron's favourites is... That's over my face. Might as well be doing this. Why am I even here? The first book of Cameron's favourites that he's going to be telling you about is... You say it. The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Yes. I like this book very much. Five out of five stars. Yes. So what type of book is it? It's a high fantasy. I know what high fantasy and low fantasy are. And look at that. Eyes. Yes. On you. So, it's high fantasy. What's high it fantasy. about? Um, it's about a... So it's very hard to describe it in a way that isn't going to sound just like any other fantasy book, but it's not any other fantasy book, it is better. It follows a young boy who... Called Kavoth. Who goes through life and, you know, learns a little bit of magic, has some people he doesn't really like, wants to fight them, has some kind of love, little difficulties, but it is very different from other fantasy, um, typically high fantasy in its pacing, in that, as you can see, it is quite a fat book. I think it's like uh, 600 and something pages. And the second one's like mm -hmm. seven, 800 and something pages. It's the first in a trilogy. The third one of which is not out yet. So I think it's important to say that we're trying to figure out what's happened to this man. So at the beginning, we know that he's not powerful oh, anymore. Yeah, okay, he's going by point. a different name. Mm. And then we learn about his life through kind of an autobiography. Yeah, him telling his story to the Chronicler. Yes. And we're trying to figure out why he's got where he's got. Yes. So you are kind of speculating the entire way what has happened to the boy that you're reading about to make him into the man that you're also reading about. Cameron's read it a couple of times. I've uh, read it twice, yeah. Yeah, and our housemate has read it a bunch of times. Like, it's his all-time favourite book. Yes, yeah. Um, and they were both telling me to read it for ages as well, and then I read it, and it's very good. It's better than other fantasy in that um, it's 
character development's better, it's writing's better, and the slower pacing gives more room for development, and the world feels bigger than other fantasy books. The kind of storytelling is so good and so well thought through that there's loads of kind of hints and ideas and possibilities that are open for the next book. We can spend, and I have done with our housemate, like hours, mm -hmm. hours, discussing kind of different theories and yeah. possibilities. So you're like trying to figure out what bits of the book relate to that, what's happened already, what hasn't happened, and then what it means when they will happen. Loads of stuff. It's very well thought through. Yes. It's a huge world. Yeah. Very, very clever. Incredibly clever. Yeah. And the magic system is really cool. It's kind of underpinned by scientific principles. It's not just as airy fairy. Oh, okay. Like systems. made up scientific principles. So sure. Made up magic but principles. It, but it feels quite <laughs> academic, you know? I quite like it. It seems there's more logic behind it than okay. the magic system. One of the magic systems is like that. The other one is not at all. But they're both cool. Is that it for this one? Uh... The next book that is in Cameron's top five is. Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alia Sayens. So, hmm. What's it about? Chop, cut, oh, you do that bit. So it is about two boys in the 1980s who become best friends over the course of the summer. Yep. And that's basically it. You just kind of follow their own personal growth and their relationship with each other. That's yeah. all you need to know. It's a bit of a coming age story. Coming of age, self-identity. Yeah, a large part of what I enjoy is that kind of coming of age, figuring things out portrayal I feel like it does it really really nicely in a really kind of beautiful and simple way um, and allows you to kind of learn about the characters but doesn't kind of try and oversell it or get a bit too complicated because you know that I think that can kind of confuse and muddy books sometimes and it has kind of three main relationships and aspects that I really like so it's Ari's relationship with Dante and the figuring out of that and then his relationship with himself and particularly his masculinity and he's trying to figure that out and where he stands kind of on himself and who he wants to be versus who he is and his relationship with Dante plays into that a lot because Dante is kind of a quite a different man than he is and that's quite interesting kind of to see that play off each other those two play off each other and then his relationship with his parents in particular his mother which I think is really really beautiful and the way his mother kind of treats him and respects his autonomy mm -hmm. um, and other things it's been a while since I read it so I'm kind of struggling to remember but you I really it. liked it yeah at some point yeah I reread it and it was really really good it was just as good yeah the characters but I think those the are the main the, yeah. the, the relationships definitely and those three relationships in particular are uh, what I enjoyed about it the most mm. but the writing um, was really good and it's like anybody can read it like we both love it and we thrust this upon people don't we like always giving it to family yes good book the next book that we're going to be talking about is a Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Which I understand is controversial on YouTube, which it yeah. shouldn't be because it's amazing. It's a bit of a controversial booktube book, and as we all know. Everything else is wrong. Okay, so this one is about... Four men and their relationships from university, kind of, through the rest of their lives. It's mainly about their interplay between each other, um, rather than kind of like, kind of the other aspects of their lives. Character focus, literary fiction book. It's huge. It just follows them and their lives. That was very close to my toes. Some of the best writing I've ever read, which is one of the biggest reasons. You'll probably notice um, in this video there are kind of <laughs> several themes that I like. I like good writing and I like good characters more than anything else. I think those are what make a great book for me. Mm -hmm. All of these books have amazing writing, like better writing than anything else I read, which is why they make it in here. Yeah, they all the have characters, characters are all very central. Dune probably has the least good characters. Spoilers, Dune's on the list. You see... Um, one of the characters you kind of learn about their backstory and I that bit's really nice kind of an eloquently done very delicately handled I think for a very difficult subject I really enjoyed that even if it made me cry a hell of a lot yeah I remember when Cameron was reading this book you read this one before me did you no after it was in the first year of uni and we read it around a similar time. I remember Cameron sitting on my bed, lying on my bed, sitting on my bed, pacing around my room <laughs> in my yeah. uni halls. Get very and anxious when I'm reading. Yeah. He gets very into books when he's reading. If he loves a book... Very emotional. <laughs> he just feels so much emotion and he'll have to like read a bit, then have to walk around a bit, then have to lie down a bit, then he'll have to move a bit, and then yeah. sit up a bit. Very Lots active of different reader. Positions. Um, yeah, and I remember when he was reading this and he just kept looking up and going, it's so good, the writing's so good. Yeah, I remember like just folding down pages on passages so I could go back and just read that paragraph again. Yeah. So it introduces kind of a, a fifth kind of main character at one point, mm. which becomes somewhat of a father figure for one of the other characters. And that's a really beautiful interaction to watch. Yeah, that's one of the best. Um, absolutely kind of stunning and 
so emotional and incredible. The slow portrayal of their lives, I think, is just excellent in this. I really enjoy watching you really them, get to know them slowly live their lives through a massive, you know, hefty book. And I just think that's great. This one I've got the least to say about, so I'll be quicker. Sorry about that. Fourth book on Cameron's list is... Dune. Dune by Frank Herbert. This is the one we disagree on the most, that would be fair to say. Yeah, for sure. You gave it three stars, Yeah. which is very unfair. But, because I haven't read it in a while, I don't know why it's very unfair, and I can't really argue a case for it right now. <laughs> it's sci-fi, for those of you who don't know. Yep, yeah, sci-fi. Um, it is kind of one of the original founders of sci-fi, so it's kind mm. of almost like Lord of the Rings was to fantasy, this is to sci-fi. And it reads more like that, so if you've ever read Lord of the Rings, and it's quite slow pacing wise, it doesn't really read like, you know, Game of Thrones or kind of uh, any other modern fantasy. This reads less like modern sci-fi, because it's very slow paced, and kind of less... Um, very slow paced. It's more world building driven than... Yeah. Event driven like modern sci fi is. I would so say. it's about a far future yep. interstellar empire. Feudal interstellar empire. Yeah. Different noble houses own different planets. Yeah. And you kind of follow one of these noble houses who has a rival with a different noble house and you follow that conflict. So I really love the <laughs> philosophical elements of this book. Um, I remember several times kind of you just stop when you're reading it and just go, oh, that's a really beautiful concept, a really beautiful thought, a really beautiful idea, um, presented quite nicely, and then enjoy that, relish in it, and then keep going. The characters are really good, uh, a little bit one-dimensional, but uh, very good uh, and interesting, and they yeah. just have a very unique purpose in the book, and kind of convey the story onwards really nicely. There isn't yeah. a huge amount of development, I will admit, in them but yeah. I still really enjoy them as characters. Yeah. It's the first in like a massive series and he definitely lays down some good It wasn't going to be the first in the massive series, it was going to be the one and only, I think. Huh. That's my understanding, I could Gosh, be wrong. that makes it worse! Yeah. This one... Is great! Cameron loves. Yeah. And he tries to get people to read it and we do read it and we do not like it as much. His mum, his mum likes it a lot. Ready? Ready. The final book, and one of the best, maybe. Um, the most recent. Definitely up there in terms of the best, yeah. That is, I'm very glad to say, normal people. I know my face again. Yeah, now. sorry about that. Let's do that again. Normal people by Sally Rooney. Yep, yeah, I read this last month. Mm. Um, and this book kind of emotionally resonated with me potentially more than anything else ever has. Um, Would absolutely you like incredible to see what book. It's about? keep forgetting that bit. You guys should have read all these, they're very good. Ooh, very bright. Yeah. I'm just not gonna hold up that book for the rest of this because I think it's too bright and you can't really see the cover anyway, so we all know what we're talking about. It's about two teenagers that meet and then it follows them and their relationship through university. It's a relationship study. It's a character and relationship study mm. of these two people and how they interact. Yeah, like I said, it, it hit me emotionally more than I think anything else has, probably because I saw a lot of myself and you in it to some mm. extent. So like when I was reading A Little Life, that made me cry a lot, but I didn't really see much of us yeah. in any of the characters. Like you see elements of yourself in any character, obviously, but yeah. not to a large extent. This we felt a lot more like us. We've been together since we were 17. Yep. Since we're quite young. We're 23 now, so there's that. And it's pretty similar in that I think that they it's get together. It's not all together. similar. They get together <laughs> at 17 and then it follows their relationship from that. And it's not at all similar to our relationship in the way that they kind of interact and stuff like that. But you can but identify I feel like, bit. I mean when I finished it, it hit me so emotionally hard that I like lay in bed and just kind of thought <laughs> about it for like 45 minutes, just like overwhelmed. It was so good. I got a text at work telling me how much he loved me and I texted back saying what's brought this on and he said normal people and I said okay I get it because <laughs> I read it in January and kept telling Cam you'll love it you'll love it and then he read it. Yeah no it's very good so I really like the characters in it the side characters are a little bit weak um, similar to her first book where that was an issue um, more of an issue in her first book she definitely improved on it in this I felt but mm -hmm. Still a little bit weak, but that wasn't the point of the book, so I can forgive it. The point of the book is the interplay between these two main characters. The main two are really interesting, really deep, and their interplay is really interesting, really deep. Yeah. And it swaps perspective, and that's really interesting in that you can see 
how one of them is misreading the other and then when you're reading the next chapter you know something from the prior chapter that the character you're reading from doesn't and it gives you a really nice insight from the other person's perspective even when you're reading from the opposite perspective and I really enjoy that. So yeah, in terms of the fact that she makes some characters like one dimensional, I feel like part of the nature of the book is that she's doing that on purpose, especially in a relationship between Connell and his mother, it's kind of intentionally she's left a little bit flat I think and it's reflected in the book that he doesn't see that and he kind of sees her as a flat one dimensional she's just my mother thing. You can read it as that all the main characters are looking at all the side characters in their lives as side characters and failing to acknowledge their kind of fullness as characters, as, as people. I think we all do that to some extent because in our so lives. they're so focused on themselves. Themselves and, and, their and their relationship. And I feel like that's part of the point of the book and that to some extent that is a deliberate choice that she's made. I'm sure it is, yeah. So again, the writing is absolutely beautiful in all of these books. Mm. <laughs> beautiful writing. It's um, different though, isn't this it? This one's very different. So a, a Little Life's beautiful in kind of long, explosive, brilliant kind of paragraphs. This is beautiful in its sparsity. Um, but I really like this in that it trusts you to kind of add things and it trusts you to figure things out. So she kind of makes room and permits you to fill in the spaces that she's left. And I feel like that probably enabled me to have that connection I was talking about here with her earlier because I put in a lot of mm -hmm. probably my own life into it and I feel like a lot of people would be able to do that. That's what's good about because books, she, right? Yeah, but especially the way she's written it, it's left yeah. room for that and it's it left the capacity to for that. On your own experience. And her use of punctuation as well, she doesn't use speech marks, um, I think allows you to do that as well because you kind of really get into the head and the yeah. flow and then you, by getting into it, put more of yourself into it. Is that it? Yeah, basically. That's it. Yay. Bye. All done. Smashed it. Outro time. Outro time. So that's it. Done. We are done. Cameron. God, we were laughing so much more at the start and then it got really serious, didn't I it? I know, when you started focusing, didn't you? Trying to make a good video for you guys. Yeah, you did. You did good. Thank you. He is actually really good at talking about books. We talk about books a lot, to be fair. We spend a lot of our time talking about books, so. Yes, yeah, that's fair. This was really nice. Thank you very I hope much you for having all me enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more videos with Cameron, then you can comment down below and say so. Say hi, be nice. And if you don't, you can comment down below as well. Of you course. know, that'd be fair. Democracy. Of course. <laughs> He's done. We're done. We're gonna go now. Thank you very much for watching. Being a pleasure. Bye. Yes. I will see you next week with another video. Cameron probably won't, but we'll probably see you another time. I might be back. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, we could do see more videos together. Received. We'll see, see how this goes. If anyone has any ideas for videos that we could film, we're open to suggestions. Bye for now everyone, hope you're doing well, and I'll see you soon. Bye. That's <laughs> fine. It's fine. Get on with it. Hi everyone. No, let me do it. Let me do it. Uh, <laughs> come on. The pressure's on. She's cracking. Maybe this is what you're like every video. Is this how much you have to redo everything? You're like laughing all the time. I just never see it. Which has my good side. We should have sat on that side. I think my left is my better side. The less my Break best me in the side. comments, YouTube. Which one's better? The less my best side, because I'm losing. Oh, my piercing's oh, no, this side. That side too. <laughs> oh, stop! It'll seem like I'm controlling. You are! <laughs> there will be enough of you being obstinate in the video already. Big word. Try and show off. The dukedom. Dukedom? Dukedom. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs>